Okay, so we are back in this one. I'm just going to pretty much run through my trading strategy, combining some of the components that I have discussed in the live premium lounge. Um, I do want to just make a disclaimer. Everything that I'm sharing with you guys is merely just my way of trading. It does not mean that it overrides any other individual's uh, content. It just means that I've combined whatever I've learned and I've incorporated that into my trading strategy. And that has helped me significantly to improve my um, odds. Let's call it that. Okay, sweet. So let's look at basic uh, information regarding my trading strategy. If you look in the threads, in here I have basically explained the core components that I use for this strategy. So it requires an impulse break. It requires imbalances to be formed because of the impulse break. It requires us to mark out supply and demand zones. And it also requires a time sensitive uh, window where we're using liquidity from the different sessions as a way to target exits or enter the market at those, those particular points. Okay, if you go down a little bit further, you'll see it says in this setup, um, I'm using a five minute time frame. Um, I showed a clear impulse break labeled IB or impulse break. The impulse break formed and the imbalance and the candle just before the imbalance acts as a demand zone for price to return to. I then scale down to the one minute time frame, repeating the same process, waiting for the five minute um, for price to return back to the five minute demand zone, hit the 50%, reject off of it, go to the one minute, and then wait for structure to form just as before with the impulse break. Once that happens, it will create its own one minute demand zone and then you can enter on the demand zone set your sl below the demand zone or uh, in reverse if you're doing a sell it would be a supply zone and then set your tp at the liquidity zones of the session opens if there is any sessions above that or below that area where you can target as exits that's a perfect place for you to get out Okay, so back to the chart window itself. Okay, so in this example uh, from yesterday, I had the Asia session and I was looking for a London session entry as a buy position going up. So this trade was primarily just a, a five minute setup. So I'm going to go down to the five minutes. Okay. Asia session has already formed its liquidity. The primary opening range liquidity is sitting more or less in the range middle of the Asia session high and low. So it went low, it went high. Then during London manipulation, it started kind of dipping below the Asia session. As you can see, if I just draw a line going across there. So that's where it clearly formed a liquidity sweep on the low of the session. So you can always use that as um, almost like a swing approach. Uh, if any of the highs or the lows of the Asia session has been swept and it shows rejection, then you can look for potential buys or long positions in the opposite direction or vice versa. Right, so now that we have done the liquidity sweep from a session range perspective, price has bounced off of that area and started going upwards. Now, what I've discussed earlier was when you have a clear trend that has a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and then price breaks the last 
lower, high, upwards. That is your indication that price has potentially decided to start reversing in the op opposite direction. So we have taken out liquidity. So that would be the Asia low. Liquidity was swept and price went above the last lower high. And this is now what we call an impulse break. Once you, once you have the impulse break, you simply just mark out the demand zone, which typically is the last candle in the range before price did an impulse break upwards. And usually there is an imbalance or fair value gap just residing above that demand zone as a potential pullback area for price to return to. If you have all of those things in your favor, then you're in a good place to potentially take a trade. So with that said, we can see that London opened over here. There's your 15 minute range. So there's definitely liquidity there for price to return to if structure breaks higher. So price then you look at using the same trend line tool. There was a lower high, um, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So that was liquidity sweep over there. And then there was another one there. It clearly swept that last one again before it started chasing higher. So realistically, you could have used this one as your impulse break, but this one was a clear formation where you can see that it, um, it clearly broke structure with a bullish or bearish candle closing below this last lower low swing. So when price displaced upwards and it closed above that lower high, that was my indication that perhaps is now showing that it has bullish tendencies. So I did an impulse break from the highest point on that swing, drawing a straight line across. And then if price clearly breaks and closes with a bullish candle above that range, that lower high, then we have what we call a scenario where we have a demand zone being formed. The demand zone is essentially that last candle that formed just before the impulse break upwards and left the fair value gap or imbalance behind. That demand zone is over there. Now you can be very specific if you want to. You can kind of scale this out a little bit more to kind of incorporate two or three candles. But as long as you have a imbalance that formed just before that impulse break above that level. So that is a favorable demand zone where I want price to kind of be pulled towards, react off, and then potentially take a trade further. With that said, on the five minutes, I'm done with my technical analysis on the five minutes. Even when price is there, I'm actually just, I can scale down to the one minute to now verify what's actually happening on the one minute. So let's um, get in on that. Okay, there we go. You can also use the three minute. Three minutes may be a little bit cleaner, but uh, this is also still acceptable. So again, I'm going to use that same approach. Price went into the demand zone. I, I'm not taking a trade when it taps the demand zone. I'm waiting for structure to show that the one minute is now also aligned to the three minutes, uh, sorry, to the five minutes, my higher time frame, And then I'm taking a potential trade off of that one minute demand zone. So in this case, price came down. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a simple up, down, higher high, oh, sorry, a lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. And there we have a break right there. 
So now that price has broken that last structure, just gonna delete that. I then go in, I mark my impulse break. Okay, the clear bullish candle breaking and closing above this last lower high swing. That means it's been rejecting this five minute demand zone. And because it's rejecting the demand zone, and it has shown its alignment to the five minute higher time frame uh, bullish movement. I now go in and I mark the last candle that, or two candles or three candles, whichever smaller range that you want to consider as your uh, demand zone. I just draw that out from wick to wick and if price returns back into it, I'm taking a trade roughly around the 50%. So the trade ultimately comes down to this 50% and it bounced off of it and immediately it started showing bullish uh, price action. So with this, it's a very simple strategy. It's just purely aligning your two to three time frames to the direction that you want. And if it rejects off of the demand zone or the supply zone, remember supply is above and demand is below. Then you're taking the trades. Okay, so the that's it. That's a very simple way of approaching it. The exit points is very easy. All I did was I'm targeting already existing price action where price already has been as a quick target. And if you set your stop loss just below the uh, one minute demand zone, you can also extend this a little bit further to incorporate the five minute demand zone. If you want to compensate for potential spreads, uh, then you can do that too. It just does affect your risk to reward a little bit. So, but still a one to 5.9, almost a 1.6, a uh, one to six uh, risk to reward ratio is a very, very good win. So if this was your hundred dollar loss potentially, then this is a six hundred dollar win. And there you go. You can see how price just beautifully ran up. Now, one other thing that you can incorporate is, like I said, the quarterly theory manipulation happened during this phase, and the moment the manipulation was over. And it's now in the distribution phase. You can see that is now also in favor to distribute the liquidity that was gathered during the, the accumulation phase and the manipulation phase to now be distributed over the length of um, the rest of the move. Just briefly jumping to the 15 minutes so that we can quickly um, reference some of the levels that we had. Where is this now? There we go. So if you have a look here, the New York and London session liquidity is residing below that setup. So what was I targeting when I was looking for an exit? I was looking for this New York range from the Monday, the 1st of April. So ultimately, if you draw the one minute liquidity range, let's just make sure we've got that set properly. Then you can see I targeted the bottom of that New York range, uh, opening range liquidity zone as an exit point as the, the drawn liquidity. If I wanted to target higher, there's a London session as well as an Asia session. Um, even this old New York session is all part of liquidity um, residing higher and price has not yet even swept this high. So it is very, very likely that price just going to go right up to that level. And you can clearly see that's exactly what happened with price. It just jumped all the way up to those levels. So I hope this gives you guys some, some key pointers that can help you. 
please do go through RP's videos where he's talking about how he enters and exits trades and using the two candle approach as part of your strategy incorporate some of that because so much of that is valuable and very easy entering targets but in my opinion when you combine that to true market structure formation with displacement or impulse breaks imbalances and liquidity grabs aligning at least two time frames you're going to be having so much more success with your trades Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.